Good morning, New Beginning. Bless you in the name of Jesus. Why are you about to get started with our praise and worship and voice? We're actually joining with us. Feel free to serve the Lord. I have you chosen. I have the Spirit in you. Thank you. Amen. Oh 
my home. Yes. My home comes from the Lord, who yes. made heaven and earth. Yes. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Thank you. you shall preserve Thank your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even furthermore. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for your spiritual blessing. Thank you for me and our shepherd, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for dying on the cross so we could be here today, Lord. Lord, thank you for this church service and everyone in it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
just put it back up. It, it's just something Jesus ought to do. But the fact of the matter is, it was a happy day when Jesus was. All of our sins away. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It is, it's still a happy day. Every time I think about the goodness of God and what He has already done for me, I realize beyond a shadow of doubt that it was a happy, happy day. It was a happy day when Jesus walked. All of my sins, my sins away. It was, it was a happy. It was a happy day. Hallelujah! Thank God for the privilege. Thank God for the honor to be washed, <laughs> to be saved, to all be on my way to heaven. Anyhow, thank God for Jesus. He has done it again with one single action of dying on Calvary. He saved all mankind who want to be saved. And it was, it was a happy day. And it is a happy day. I get excited about the fact that God has washed all my sins away. I'm thankful to God that it was, and it is, a day to brag about. It's a happy, happy day. We call your attention to John chapter 10 in the New Testament. The book is John. The chapter is 10. The verses are 7 through 11. In the New Testament, the book is John chapter 10, verses 7 through 11. John chapter 10, verses 7 through 11. God has truly blessed us. Yes, he has. And I thank you, One Lord. more time. And that's reason to be thankful thank you. Thank you, Lord. for who God is. When you found John chapter 10, verses 7 through 11, you will find these words. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Mm -hmm. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. I want to talk about the good shepherd. The good. The good shepherd. The good shepherd. Jesus is talking to those who are new Christians. And he said to them that I am the door. And if anybody going to enter into the kingdom of God, they must come through me. Jesus says that if anyone has come in any other way, they not they have not entered into this, this new kingdom. Jesus says, not only am I the door, I am the shepherd. 
And because I'm the door and I am the shepherd, people now have new life. And it is eternal life. It is life forever. It is life from now on. Many times people ask the question, if one is born again, and he or she go on to commit sin, is that person still saved? Is that person still born again? Well, first of all, no one knows when one is born again other than God himself. We can look at people and become fruit inspectors, but many times we just flat missed it. Because when we get to heaven, we're going to really be surprised at who's there. And secondly, we're really going to be surprised of who's not there. One preacher preached for 35 years. And finally, in the middle of one of his sermons, he received Christ as his Savior. Amen. I said, a preacher preached the gospel. He preached the word of God for 35 years. And finally, 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 that one particular day, after 35 years, he became born again. Amen. It warns us. It teaches us. Don't get caught up in the rituals of life and not receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's right. Don't get caught up in the facts of life and not receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Don't get caught up in the family reunions and don't get caught up in the, the sporting events and miss Jesus Christ as your Savior. Every person under my voice needs to know who Jesus is. Right. And they must be assured beyond a shadow of doubt that they received him as their personal Savior. That's why we all are to evangelize. We are all to look out for people's souls. We are all to look out for people that they will join us in heaven. So the question is always asked, why evangelize? Why tell people about Jesus? First of all, because God has been patient with you. And God has saved your soul. Secondly, God commands it in Matthew chapter 28. Verses 18 through 20. He says to us that we must go and share the gospel. He says to us that we must tell people about the Jesus that died on a hill called Calvary. We must tell people about the Jesus who rose that third day morning. And because it is commanded of us from God, we must reach souls for Jesus Christ. It is clear in the text that, that Jesus is talking about and talking to the Pharisees. So it warns us and it tells us that we must all make sure that we don't get caught up in things of leadership. All right. A name calling situation. We cannot get caught up in big eyes and small you. We cannot get caught up into the who's who of church attendance. We can't get caught up into who sits where and, and who drives what and what people dress like. We must get caught up in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. And that's the only way we're going to get to know Jesus. And that's the only way we're going to get to heaven. And that's the only way we will get to obey the Holy Spirit himself. And that's the only way we're going to get to see God. Too many churches, too many churches all over this world have neglected to reach people 
for Jesus Christ because there is no evangelistic spirit. There is no evangelistic thrust. That's why at the New Beginning Church, even if you're mopping the floor, it ought to be an opportunity for you to tell somebody about Jesus. If you're baking tea cakes and cookies, it's an opportunity for you to tell somebody about Jesus. If you're on your job and God opens the door for you to talk to somebody about Jesus, he will, he will appoint the right time, the right circumstances, the right situations where you can tell somebody about Jesus. God has called all of us who are saved to talk to other folk about Jesus. I attended a conference and, and when I was at the conference and the person was up singing or the person was up speaking or the person was up, up testifying or the person was up preaching, there was a sign language person or persons on the side of them that was communicating the word of God. And the reason why they were communicating the word of God through sign language is because Jesus wanted everybody to get to know him as Lord and Savior. The message is urgent. The situation is critical. Everybody needs to get to know Jesus. In the text, Jesus says, I am the door. The first point here today is the fact that the good shepherd is able. I said the good shepherd is able. The good shepherd is able. The good shepherd is able to do everything that he promised he can do. He's so able until there's nothing else, no one else, who can get us to heaven but the good shepherd. In verses 1 through 6, Jesus talks about the fact that he's the one who opens the door. He talks about the fact that the sheep knows his name and he knows the sheep name. He talks about the fact that whatever you do, you don't follow a stranger. Now we teach children, even if we're not saved, we teach children, don't talk to a stranger. We teach children, don't even entertain a stranger. We teach children, don't just walk off somewhere while everybody else that you know is in one cluster. Don't you just walk off and leave. We even teach grown children that. That strangers are not people that you ought to have time to even deal with. Jesus says, when there's a stranger, my sheep do not even listen to their voices. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Do you know the shepherd's voice? There are a lot of people all over the world that are still talking about how how, how God is speaking to them. There are people all over the world that's talking about, I prayed about it before I made this decision. I said the other day to a lady, I said, you prayed to something, you prayed to somebody, but you didn't pray to the God that I pray to. Because when you pray to God, you don't have your mind made up before you start praying. And then when you pray to God, you do not, you do not, you do not uh, uh, push your will on God's will. And when you pray to God, you need to understand that God will always line up with what he's already said in his holy word. Said to brother, as a man, she may have prayed, but she didn't wait on the answer. She may have prayed, but she didn't hear the God that I'm talking about. She may have prayed, but she didn't hear from God because God would not allow her to make that kind of decision. People must hear the voice of God. My first point is he's able. Jesus is able to hear you when you call him. Jesus is able to open the door when the door needs to be opened. He says, first of all, I'm, I'm the door. And the reason why he's saying that he's the door is because during that day, the shepherd would lay across the doorway. 
And he would lay across the doorway, first of all, so the sheep would not even think about getting out. And then he would lay across the doorway so, so the enemy wouldn't even think about coming in. The third thing is, he would lay across the doorway simply because he would lay his life down for his sheep. Jesus lays his life down for us. Jesus protects us. Jesus keeps us. Not only just because he can do it, he does it because he's able. If you want somebody to keep you, Jesus can keep you. Every single day of my life, I ask God, God, keep my mind. God, keep my spirit. God, watch over me. And everybody ought to be praying the same prayer. Everybody ought to be saying, God, if you don't keep me, I can't be killed. So Jesus says to them, most assuredly, I want you to know, I say to you, I am the door to the sheep. If anybody going to get to the sheep, you got to come by me. It is like the man of the house. It is like the, the woman, a single woman who's the woman of the house. They make sure that the, the, alarm, the alarm is on. They make sure that the windows are down. They make sure that the doors are locked. Because they are responsible. Because Jesus is able, Jesus is responsible to carry us through. Jesus says, I'm a door. I'm the door. I am the door. He says, I am the door. That's why at the end of the message, the preacher says, the door is open. Some have said, the doors are open. But Jesus is the door. He's the only door. And when we give the invitation, we ought to say the door is open. The invitation is extended. Jesus is waiting on you. Jesus is, is waiting for you to answer. The door is open. The door has been swung ajar. The door is open. Jesus says, I am the door to the sheep. If anybody going to get to the sheep, they got to come by me. You know at night, you, you, you know in the daytime, if anybody's going to get to your child, they got to come by me. I mean, the child can be big, but if it's your child, they got to come through you. Jesus says, these are, these are my sheep. And he says, I'm the door, and you got to come by me to get to the sheep. In verse number 8, he says, and all who ever came before me, they are nothing but thieves and robbers. You see, a thief will take your stuff while you're not looking. And there are some people that take stuff just to be taking stuff. I mean, they can't use it. They can't do anything with it. But they have gotten to a point that they get joy out of taking stuff just because they can take it. They, they, they walk in your house and and they, they see something and they don't even know what it is. They, they stick it in their pockets. A thief gets joy out of being able to get away with it. That's why they become two, three, four, five, six time losers because they just get joy out of taking stuff and then they brag about it. We brought the camera back there for the church. We brought the camera. I, I had been, been looking at the camera, looking at the manual, and I left it sitting on the couch, and somebody came in the house and took it. Thieves love to brag about what they take. So they took it, and they rolled it down the street as if it was their suitcase. They took it, and then they went to their apartment, and it was three men there, one man behind the camera, two men in front of the camera, and they, they scanned the floor so everybody could see all the stuff that they had taken from all these houses and all these cars. They had broken into stuff. They had stole stuff. They were bragging about it. Then they were flipping money up and down, and they were bragging about how much money they had taken from homes, and they videoed themselves with that same camera. Hazel, they were bragging about it. 
They were in front of the camera and they were counting their money and they were flipping the, and, and using all kinds of language, bragging about how they had stolen stuff. Somebody asked me, how do you know they videotaped themselves? They stole the camera and, and then after they stole it and they videotaped themselves, I mean they didn't have this before, before the days of mask. And when a thief get bold, he didn't cover his face. So they took the camera after they finished videotaping themselves and they pawned the camera. And all you have to do is turn in the serial number and the model number and the police tracks it right back to the pawn shop. And when the police called, he said, hey, I got all your stuff. Everything that was in the bag, I got everything. Come on down to the station. Got down to the station, he put the video on. The video that they had taken with the camera that they had stolen and they left the tape in the camera. Now you got their face recognition, you have you have their voices, you have their record, you even have their name because they were bragging about it. Look at this, Jim. A thief get pride. He gains pride out of just taking your stuff. That's why mom and daddy tell children, don't trust everybody. That's why when they say you can't go spend the night in anybody's house and no one can come spend the night at your house because you don't know those people. Jesus says, those who came before me are thieves. And thieves will always, will always take your stuff when you're not looking and thieves will always brag about it. Thieves are sneaky. Thieves will come to your house and compliment your house and take your stuff. One fella, he doesn't, he still, he still doesn't know. I just said, put that back. Put, put that back. I still hadn't told his mom. But he's standing right in front of the camera, brother with luck. I mean, he's standing in front of the camera. The money was sitting on the table, and and he, Brother Carter, he picked it up, and he went to take it to his pocket. And I saw him with my own eyes. I said, put that down. That doesn't belong to you. Leave that alone. That's why we teach our children. We teach our, we teach our children, Jacob, we teach our children all the time. If it doesn't belong to you, leave it alone. It's not worth going to prison over. A thief. Jesus says they're thieves. These thieves, these thieves, they're going to brag about it. They're going to take it. They're going to brag about it. Then Jesus says, they are thieves and robbers. You see, a thief is sneaky. But a robber takes your stuff in your face. They will get your stuff right while you're looking at them. And we've seen so many people in the last few years, they know everybody has two things on them. Number one, everybody has a camera. Because now they're on the phone. Everybody has a camera. And now everybody has a gun. Now you already know, you already know that there are cameras all over the world, so you ain't shy about it. A robber will come to your face and say, Derek Chauvin robbed George Floyd of his life knowing that cameras were looking at him. And he looked at him and said, I double dare you say anything. And he kept bearing down. He kept his knee on his neck. And you can see the pictures. You can see the video. He looks at the camera brother card and said, you ain't going to do anything about it. A robber is bold. He will rob you of your stuff. And now robbers trying to rob with no, no real gun. John Houston gets shot four times with a fake gun robbing, robbing the place. Not only are robbers bold, they are dumb. Jesus says, the guys that have come before me, he's talking about the false prophets that have come before me. They have come before me, and when they came before me, they were bold, and they took your stuff. They didn't look out for your well-being. 
That's why I look at some preachers sometimes I'm like, wow, really, you bold. Preachers that will stand and say, yeah, I did it and you can't do anything about it. And people are still flocking to those churches. They, they are still hanging out in the church. Now, first of all, if you're going to do some things and you're not going to be apologetic, don't put it on Front Street. Don't brag about it. Don't, don't, don't just flaunt it before people. But we have some bold robbers. Even in the church, they are bold. They will take your stuff right in your face and wonder if you're going to be able to do anything about it. Jesus says they've come before me and they're nothing but thieves and robbers. Not only were they robbing them of their stuff, they were robbing them of their salvation. Let me make myself clear. They were robbing them of their salvation because they were not delivering the word of God so men could come to know Jesus as their Savior. Said to a preacher one day, I said, brother, you didn't really preach that text the way the Bible says it. He said to me, well, the people like it. Didn't you see them shouting all over the place? See, robbers and thieves will lie on God. False prophets will lie on God. And as long as they can get a shot, as long as they can get another dollar, they're okay with it. I said, man, you didn't preach that text the way God says to preach that text. That text did not say what you told the people, he said. He said, well, the folk like it. Didn't you see them shouting all over the place? We should not preach for a shout. We should preach for information and inspiration. We should preach because of conviction. We should preach because of conversion. We should preach that men will come to know Jesus as their Savior. So, man, didn't you see? Didn't you see that sister throw her hat? <laughs> He better be glad my grandmama wasn't there. Because she didn't throw hats when she got happy. Grandmama Wallace would, would rush the stage. And that same preacher was preaching one day and Grandmama Wallace left up from the mother's board seat. She got up, she said, you better quit it. He kept preaching. You better quit it. He kept preaching. By the third time, this old woman in her late her late seventies said, "I told you, you better quit it." He kept preaching, and she was back, she was in the pulpit by that time, and she was grabbing him and taking him down. But when you don't preach the truth, you just preach to make the folks shout. You're not shouting. You're not pleasing God. You're not shouting to please God. You are shouting just because you feel good. And the message sounds good. But if you don't say it like Jesus said, you don't say it like the word said, if you don't exegete the text instead of exegeting the text, then you just doing things for your own glory. Jesus says that's what the robbers and the thieves do. They do things for their own glory. Jesus says, I'm the door. And if any of you enter in, you got to come in through me. And he will be saved. Verse number nine. He will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pastors. He says, Jesus says to us, we are his sheep. And if we come through him, the door, if you come through Jesus, then you will be saved. This word saved means safety, security. You will have security on earth and you will have security after death. You can only be saved. You can only be born again through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. You see, Jesus made it possible because he was the perfect God and he was the perfect man. If Jesus had not been God, he could not have saved us. If Jesus had not been perfect man, he could not have felt our iniquities. And because he was a perfect God and he was a perfect man, he is the hypostatic union. And because he's God's man and the man God, then he qualifies to save us. He's a man that had no sin. He is the door. He is the good shepherd that opens the door for us. And had he not been man, he couldn't open the door for us. Had he not been God, he couldn't save us. 
And because it's Jesus, we have to make sure that we give the right message. He says that those who enter, the one who enters in by me, he is saved and he will go in and out and find pastors. Find, F-I-N-D, find pastors. So Jesus is our feeder. Our shepherd is our feeder. You have to watch what table you eat from. That's not good English, but it's right. You have to be careful from which table you eat. You have to, what am I saying? You have to be careful where you get fed. You have to be careful what presentation you receive. Jesus not only saves us and he secures us, not only does he secure us, he also feeds us. There's a lot of new stuff on the scene. And a lot of preachers are going for it. A lot of people are going for it. Don't let your black heritage get you in trouble with God. I think I said that again. Don't let your black and Latino heritage get you in trouble with God. Don't be so proud. Don't be so proud of where you came from and how you were built. Because you had no choice in how you were built. You had no choice in who you were born to. You had no choice into what language you spoke. You had no choice into who you really are on the inside. Don't get so caught up into your heritage until you miss Jesus. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Yes, that's fine, but don't let that interrupt your conversation and your lifestyle with Jesus. I'm sure the Latinos have a saying like that too. Say it loud, I'm black and proud. Yes, you ought to be black and proud, but if you don't recognize Jesus and who he is, you will be black in hell. Jesus says, I'm the door. I'm the door to the sheepfold. He says, if you come in, you will find, find pastors. You will find pastors. In other words, you will have a place to eat. You will have a place to, to, to reside. You will have a place to be. He says, I am the shepherd. I am the shepherd to the sheep. And if you come through the good shepherd, you will have ability to find the right pastors. This word pastor is a place to graze, a place to eat. Let me tell you, some food, some food will upset your stomach. Let me just put it like they put it back on. Some food would give you gas. Yeah. Yeah. Some food will come out the back and the front. Some food will mess you up and it will mess up your genetics for life. Some food that you eat, some food that you physically eat. See, you can't eat at every restaurant. You eat at some restaurant and you pay for it the rest of the month. <laughs> Stick to my chicken. That chicken I stick to my water. I don't have to raise my pinky when I when I drink and when I talk. Some food just ain't good for you. And if physical food is not good for you in certain places, then let me tell you, spiritual food is not good for you in certain places. Watch where you eat. Make sure you got the right diet. Make sure you're, you're doing the right fast at the right time. Make sure you're hanging out with the right crowd. It says, these robbers, these thieves will mess you up. Verse number 10. Not only is Jesus a Jesus able, he is available. Jesus is available. He says, he says, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. Regardless of how they make you feel, regardless of how they you see them, regardless of what pedestal you put them on, the thief comes for three reasons, and those three reasons only. They are setting you up to steal, kill, and destroy. I mean, and you can tell, you can tell a lot, and when, when people get involved in these, in these cults, we sit back and we look at them and say, how did they believe that was true? We'll 
saying, we're saying even today, we're saying even today, how did David Koresh take these folk down this road to get burned up in a compound? How did, how did this guy get them to drink some poison? But what the thief does, the robber does, they feed you just a little bit at a time. The devil knows the word. When Jesus, when Jesus was up on an exceeding high mountain, the devil says, go and jump the God we serve will, will give his angels charge over you. He was quoting from the Proverbs. He was quoting from the Psalms, rather. He was quoting the scripture. The devil knows the word. He will give you just enough to make you jump. He will feed you just enough to make you fall out with God. He will allow you to have have just enough prosperity so you can trust him. The devil always come at you when you're weak. A lot of, a lot of folk are in relationships that are terrible relationships because they, caught, they were caught on the rebound. They were caught when their lives were miserable. They were caught when things weren't going well for them. They were caught when they were down and out and somebody came along and said, you're cute. That's all it takes. Somebody comes along and says, I really like your voice. Somebody comes along and says, I like how you walk. Now, what do you have to do with the way you walk? I, 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 really, I really like your lips. I really like your face. You're so pretty. Well, why did you do that? He told me I was pretty. And afterwards, it doesn't even make sense. Let it make no sense before woods. Make sure, make sure it doesn't make, when it doesn't make sense, call it what it is. When a person shows you who they are, believe them. Because they show you who they are. Preachers show you who they are. Men, women show you who they are. Your friends, young people, show you who they are. If they're not your friend, don't let them be your friend when you make it. A person who gets rich, whether they get rich through jobs, athletics, entertainment, uh, through the, the lotto, the person who gets rich, their lives become miserable when everybody finds out. All these cousins that never visit you, they're your cousins now. And they can tell the story. I was great granddaddy's son by this one. People who didn't like you before, all of a sudden they really like you. Now they like your hair. Mm -hmm. You sure have some pretty toes. <laughs> but they really didn't care for you before then. And I just love the way you wear your hair. Anybody in the room can wear their hair, anyway, including me, any way you want. I can have it like it is the day to day, and I can have it down on my shoulders in the morning. Because they tell me it takes about eight hours to get it right. Don't let simple stuff that doesn't make sense catch you up. The devil comes but to steal, to kill, and destroy. He is coming to make sure that he makes your life miserable. It may look good now, it may sound good now, but he's coming to make your life miserable. Don't let the devil make your life miserable. Sister Richard, I'm, I'm listening for him. Sister Richard, let it make sense to you for, for you, John. Sister so Wood, make sure that, that he loves the Lord. Don't just, don't just jump. Don't just jump just because he said, girl, that color in your hair should look good. The devil comes not just in our physical lives. He comes in our spiritual lives to steal, to kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to kill your spirit. And he wants to destroy your soul. The devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to take you out. And the devil is not playing. We see that in today's days. We see that right now. Young people, many young people are dying for foolish reasons. Take a pill here and never wake up. That's right. Take a snort here and never recover. Athletes have, who were in good, perfect shape, good condition, decided to go out one night and never show back up at home. Don't let the devil take you out on a run. If you
you going to get high, get high through the Holy Spirit for Jesus. Get it right with Jesus. Trust him. Jesus says the devil is coming to destroy you. Is there anybody in the room today that the devil has already tried to destroy? When the devil has already tried to kill your spirit. The devil has already tried to mess you up. The devil has already taken you up to a high echelon and said all of this can be yours. Little boys, teenagers get caught up in drugs because they see a guy riding in a cool car. Let me tell you, if you work and make money and save your money, you can ride in whatever you want to ride in. If you get an honest living, you can do whatever you want to do. You can live wherever you want to live. Money that comes quickly goes quickly. Friends that come quickly, they go quickly. When you look at Luke chapter 15, there's a boy, and he's living, he's in the hall pen now. He spent all he had. His daddy gave him all he wanted. He gave him his inheritance early, and he gave it to him. And the, when the daddy gave it to him, the Bible said he spent all. I mean, he was calling the shot. I set up over here for my friends. Make sure you take care of him over here. I mean, he was balling and shot calling. I know that's outdated, but he was balling and shot calling. He was he was using everything his daddy had given him so he can look good. Then he ends up in a hall field. And the Bible says, if it had not been for the angel, he would have eaten the hog slop. But the Bible says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many high servants of my father have bread enough in the spare, and here I am perishing with hunger. It says to us this morning, we may be in the hog pen or in the hog field now, but what you need to understand, you need to come to yourself and go back home to your father. When the boy was in the hog pen, he didn't think about his brother. He compared his life in the hall pen to the servants. He thought about his father and how his father would be a blessing to him. Let me tell you, stick with Jesus, stick with God, stick with the Holy Spirit so you can be blessed. Don't get into the latest, coolest fad because that's not the way to get it done. The devil wants to, Jesus is available to you. He's available. Jesus says the devil comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. And then he says, finally, that he's active. The good shepherd is active. The good shepherd is active in our lives. The good shepherd is so active until he says, I have come to give your life abundance. I have come to give your life fruitfulness. I have come to make sure your life not only get on the right track now, but stays on the right track. Yeah. Young people, don't let people get by with calling you a Bible thumper or a holy roller. You just look at them and keep walking. It's all right to be a Bible thumper and a holy roller because later on, not many years later, not many months later, not many weeks later, then they will find out that you are on the Lord's side and the Lord is on your side. Watch, watch what God does with your life. Just make sure that you stay with Jesus so he can make your life abundantly blessed. And Jesus says, more abundantly blessed. You can be fruitful and be a child of God. I turned out all right, I think. You may not think so, but I, I think I turned out all right. I, I, I think I think singing in the choir when no one else was, Brother Clark and I was in the choir as little boys, I think I turned out all right. They even brought the tools down to our buckets so we could continue to sing in the mass choir at the St. James Church. What you need to understand, God is preparing you. He's preparing you because he's active in your life. God is preparing you. This present day thing that you're looking at is not to be compared to the glory that is yet to be revealed through Christ Jesus. Jesus says, I am active in my sheep lives. I am active in my sheep life. I am blessing the sheep to be more abundantly blessed. Blessed beyond what you can dream of. Blessed beyond what you can think of. The God we serve is active. When you when you look at when you look at the presidents, 
When you look at the governors, the mayors, they major in sending children off the war. Mr. Putin making folk fight that don't even want to be in the war. You see, they, they push them off in the war. 17, 18, 19 year old boys and girls having long rifles going off to war. And they're going off to war to, to do what they do for their king. The man who sits in the White House, the man who sits on the throne, they're doing what they do for the king so the king can look good. But I thank God for Jesus. He is our king. He's a conquering king of Calvary. He didn't send us off the wall. The, the verse says, verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He didn't send us off the wall to give our lives for him. He's the good shepherd. He's the king of kings. He's the king of our kingdom. He went off the wall for us and he laid down his life for us. Jesus lays down his life for us. He's a good shepherd. And as a good shepherd, he never loses a sheep. He promises us eternal life. So if you're saved, if you're born again, if, you, if you're saved right now, it's your responsibility to look to, to be a part of God saving somebody else. Allow God to use you as a catalyst to get somebody else saved. Allow God to use your life as an example so somebody else will ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Don't just get saved and say, I'm going to heaven anyhow. Because once you are saved, you become active. You become empowered. And you need to become active and empowered enough to reach other folk for Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter if you work. It doesn't matter if you retire. It doesn't matter if you're young. It doesn't matter if you're old. God has positioned some people in your life that need to know Jesus. Yes. The young people at this church can get... Get people involved in Christ much better than I am. I just turned 60. Sister David said, I've been dying to get 60. No, I've been living to get 60. I said, I just turned 60. And some folk don't want to hear a 60-year-old bald head gray man, but they will listen to you and what you have to say. Your friends ought to get to know Jesus through you. You ought to introduce your friends to Jesus. You have to be different. You have to, you have to be separated. You have to be holy. You have to be born again. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. You tell your friends that the Jesus that I serve is active. That's why the songwriter says he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. That's why the old hymnologist would put it this way. He says, if I don't wake up in the morning, everything will be all right. That's why the old deacons used to bow down before the altar and they would say, Lord, here I am again with my head bowed down before mother's dust. I'm calling on you again. Lord, thank you that last night the, sh the sheets I, I wound up in wasn't my winding sheep. The bed I laid on was not my cooling board. They used to call on God and tell God all about it because they know God has kept them. Jesus says, I'm a good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And over 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave his life for us. No man took his life. He laid it down for the sheep. No man killed him. He gave up his life for the sheep. The door is open. The door of the church is open. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. The good shepherd has laid down his life for you. The good shepherd can make life for you abundant. Jesus says, more abundantly blessed. If you're not born again, if you're not saved, if you never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, this is your moment right now to get to know him. Trust Jesus as your Savior. It's not hard. You don't have to climb mountains. You don't have to jump a fence. Jesus says, he's the door. 
and you must come through him. He's the door. He's the way. He's the truth. He is the life. If you've not received Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to remind you that Jesus is able. I want to remind you that Jesus is available. And I want to tell you today that Jesus is actively calling you to get to know him. If you never received Jesus as your Savior, would you just bow your head after me and repeat after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have not, if you have not honestly been practicing evangelism, if you have not honestly been putting yourself in a position for God to lead somebody to Christ by using you. This is your moment. I want to pray for our church and pray for those who are listening. God, is in the name of Jesus we come. We ask you to light a fire in our church. Light a fire in our listeners. Bless us to get on fire for you, Lord. Bless us, Lord, that we will realize that it's a good thing to lead people to Christ. Bless us, Father God, to give of ourselves, knowing that you have given the ultimate gift, your very own life, and God, your very own son. Bless us today, Lord, that we will walk with you, and we will trust you. And we would get excited about leading men, boys, and girls to Christ. Bless us, Lord, that we would show them the shepherd, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. We ask you to prepare the way, prepare the hearts, prepare the people. And bless us to be prepared to share the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And how this story can save lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Come to Jesus. Just come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. Just right now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. It is offering time. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please 
Raise your hand and you will be served. Hallelujah. opportunity and this ability to give. We thank you, Father God, for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you, Father God, for money. We ask you to bless us as we come to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We ask this side to stand. Follow the first impression from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts.
God, we thank you for these gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. church and pastor davis is our pastor so in the, the scripture says second timothy 2 and 15 be diligent to present yourself approved to god a workman who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so if you have not completed uh the first quarter of listening and journaling it's not too late Whenever you get it done, please let me know because at the end of the year, we want to make sure that we have listened to the Bible. That is the most important thing, listening and journeying to the Bible so the Lord can speak to you, okay, and speak through you. So first of all, we have Sister Katrina Whitlock. <laughs> Come on down. I don't know about you all, but... I'm proud to get my certificate, even though I may, but I'm really proud to get it because it takes a whole lot to stay on track. And the next person, Sister Ann Hall, and she's not here right now. We'll make sure that she gets her certificate. Next. <laughs> Pastor Davis is 60 now. We have Sister Bang Irvin. Sister Bane Irvin, she's not here today. So we will get back to her. Brother, you are Miles. Come on down. You're welcome. Daniel Malo. 
Come on. You are not too young to listen and journal. All right. Great. Sister Sophia Galvin. Come on over. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Next we have Sister Blanca Galvin. Come on down. Next person, Brother Cap Kevin Malo. Come on down. Kevin Malo. Sister Araceli Trejo. All right. Very good. Thank you. Sister Carolyn Davis. Amen. Thank you so much for taking seriously the listening in the Bible and listening and journaling of the Bible. All of you who have not um, gotten through first quarter, please join me in doing it soon. Amen. What about him? Say again. Man, stop drinking MD20. <laughs> okay, so we got to have Brother Raymond Carter. Brother Raymond Carter, he's, he has completed his first quarter of listening in journaling. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for those of you who are, who are, are listening in journaling. Amen. So everybody, all of us got to get on board. Amen. Everybody. So once you finish the first quarter, let us, let us today, let us know. And then when you finish the second quarter, let us know. And I know many of you are already here. Amen. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Also, we want to pray for Sister Ann Paul. We are lifting her up for her health. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, there's another slide up there. Do you have Brother Pastor Davis' slide up there? Yes, our pastor has finally joined the 60 Blood Anybody that say welcome to the 60 Plus Club, you know they've been in the 60 Plus Club. Amen. They, they've been there. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Every day we want to rejoice. We want to make sure that we rejoice in the Lord for every day he gives us. Because the option we don't want right now. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the book is the book is uh, going through the final uh, evaluation. Please, if you have not received a book or have not, I'm sorry, have not signed up to get your pre-order of the book as a book on evangelism, please sign up. I'm asking every person, every person I know, to to purchase one book and then purchase or influence ten people to purchase ten books. Ten people to purchase one book each. And we are only promoting the, the paperback. We are only promoting the paperback because I just think the paperback is better put together. Amen. So it's twenty five dollars. You get to save the cost of the save on the cost of the book, and you also get to save on shipping and taxing. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Also, before we close, I, I failed to announce this during the offering time, but I want to say this. I, am, I will be hand delivering uh, gift cards to the people who were devastated by the tornado when I was last in Mississippi at Silver City, Mississippi, the county that I grew up in. I'm going to be hand delivering gift cards this week to them. Whatever you do, if you have not gotten gift cards, give me money, trust it with me, and I will purchase your gift cards to give 
to the people that were devastated, tremendously devastated in Humphreys County, primarily Silver City and Humphrey County. This is where I grew up and I went to my elementary school right there in Humphreys County. Um, I was gonna mail them as they had requested, but uh, some of the people that gave gift cards don't wanna trust that. So I will be hand delivering them this week to those who were impacted Many of them were in school with me. Many of them were my playmates. Uh, so I want you today, if you would, uh, I forgot to announce it during the offering period. If you would, please, ma'am, please, sir, we want you to, to make a difference, to make a difference. We're giving gift cards, or, uh, Walmart gift cards primarily, Walmart gift cards. So if you would trust me with your money, I'll pick it up on my way out and I will hand deliver them. And uh, I, we want to always help to impact the lives of people who are less fortunate than we are. Amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, contribute so we can contribute there. Also, the news is showing a lot of Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Rolling Fork, Mississippi. So a lot of tension is being placed there, but very little attention is being placed in Silver City. So I want to support the Silver City location. Amen. Why don't we stand and be listening? I need to see Kevin Mayno after church. I need to see Miss Pole, Sister Pole after church. Amen. Pray, Father God, that you anoint our church for service, for evangelism, for discipleship. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with us and keep us. Bless us, Father God, as we move forward in the name of Jesus, that we, Father God, will do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, we thank you that Jesus is available to us. We thank you that Jesus is able to do whatever he would have us to do. And we thank you, Lord, that Jesus is actively involved in our lives and he's active in the soul winning process. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join in together. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. You are dismissed.